All right, so before we get into writing any code today, uh, we need to take a moment to plan what our project is going to be because we've been getting these building blocks of code and these various technologies and such, and that's ultimately going to lead us to an app. But uh, before we actually work on any app, we need to have a little bit of a plan all of the best ideas start off with some sort of plan. So I'm going to draw some stuff for you on the screen here. You can take notes. You can write it on your own um, paper if you'd like. I'll give you a copy of this that I'm about to draw. But this is going to be uh, to create what is known as a wireframe. I'm going to create little thumbnails of what my project will be. So to remind you, our goal our goal web app is uh, available online. Uh, we might take a quick look at it to remind us because as I said in, in the class we have uh, this goal vmcampus.com slash sdce and if you recall if you visit that address on your mobile device it automatically takes you to the mobile friendly version if you visit it on your desktop it'll give you the fake desktop version and then you click at the bottom mobile site. Well, when we're in the mobile site, I'm going to rearrange my screen so that it kind of looks tall like a mobile device. So we have this first screen here and as I said we're going to create the unofficial uh, San Diego Continuing Ed Education app. So an app for this college. Um, We'll, we're going to have a home screen, a screen where we can show art classes, computer classes. Notice in the computer screen we have this sort of layout where I can open a particular class and then it'll show me uh, detailed class content. I can go to the art screen and then a little, di a little bit of a different way to do the same thing. Uh, this time we've got drop down menus. We'll learn what these are exactly, and when these open up, then they can have content inside of them. Pictures, text, video, audio, variety of things. We've got this side panel that we can open up, so this can have content. You know, here is monthly content, close that. Uh, this is an external link in that it actually goes to the live college's um, catalog. It's a database of actual, you know, 1,400 classes back on the home screen, have some pictures, some text, pop-up window, a little bit more content, and ability to customize. It'll prompt you for a name. The point of that then is the app can be customized to use your name, the person's name. So we've seen this before on the first and second day or so. And then of course get directions. You click that, let's say someone does uh, is interested in taking classes here? Well, under Get Directions, it should pop up and then ask to check your GPS and then create a, lo a location. On the desktop, it's not that accurate. It's giving me an, a location near downtown San Diego simply because my desktop computer here doesn't have GPS capabilities. But if someone visits on their mobile device, it should be pretty accurate. And yes, this is a live map that I can scroll around and change the view and zoom in and street view and all of that and that will work perfectly fine on a mobile device and even better we've got get directions so it'll give us directions from your current location to this campus or anywhere we want so think about it in terms of how can you repurpose this app with all of its features for your purposes so if you're taking this class to build your company's uh, your company's app this has various features that could be useful for your company um, let's say later on you want some features like uh, to be able to send uh, tweets through the app or take photos through the app or all of that other cool stuff that a mobile device can do. That's coming in month two. In month one, this is what we're ending up with. We've got a lot of the pieces of the knowledge so far in these two weeks that we've learned. We've learned HTML, CSS, JavaScript, jQuery Mobile. That was the last piece of the puzzle that we started to look at last time. And that's what's going to really help us put together quickly an interface this functionality of the map and customization and content, that's stuff we've learned so far.
So that's our end result for this month. And so now we're going to focus on creating our version of this. Every semester we, we alter it, we change it a little bit here and there, we add different features. This is our starting point. And so if we're going to create something like this, let's say we didn't even have any idea that we're going to create something like this. So definitely what I'm about to show you would be very valuable, which is to do what is known as wireframing. This is the first time I've ever done it here. I usually do it on the board, and then only half the people on one side can see it. Because if I write here, then you guys can't see it. And then I write over there, and then you guys can't see it. So I'm going to try for the first time our high-tech pen here um, on my monitor here, where I'm going to draw some some uh, little quick sketches because all the great apps and websites and such often start off as simple sketches. Uh, Twitter, for example, started off being drawn on a napkin. So, um, just good old Microsoft Paint. This thing, though, I don't know what this is. This is some proprietary smart podium $10,000 thing, I bet. So, um, first, uh, we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna make a note like this, where we've got a screen full, which is our index file, which is our very first file that we see, our very first screen that we see. That is, so that's the first thing we're seeing, right there. From that, we can go to various other. Well, let me make it a little smaller. make it like this up here this is the index file and that then can connect to an art screen and a computer screen right those are the top navigation links that I have so then let's say I would go over to this screen here which is art and this screen over here which is computers right those are some of the big main levels of our app I don't have to be super detailed at this point. I'm just getting out the concept. Well, when I uh, when I go to the art screen, for example, I look at some content here: art 101, art 102, 103. So this is content that's inside of the art screen. So I can maybe mark it like this: so 101, 102, 103, etc. I've got content inside of that screen. Well, I have other kinds of content on that screen also, don't I? I've got an art calendar panel with information and also uh, a catalog. So we can say also we've got over here, this is my side panel with some content, and I've also got a link that goes over to the cloud, over to the website. Um, the catalog on the website, I'll call it C. So the catalog <coughs> that we can then access from the website, it's out on the internet, it's a cloud, very ugly cloud, but it's out on the internet. I can go over to the computer's screen. Similar content in that then I have these sub screens, COM 101, 201, etc. Slightly different idiom in that when I tap those they actually load a whole screen full of content rather than when I'm over here and they load within the same page, these over here load in separate screens. So same sort of thing. I can say um, that this one goes to there's a basic, intermediate, and advanced content, let's say. Based on the example here, are there any other screens of this app? Am I, do I have a complete wireframe here? Well, remember, if we're on the home screen, we have this, this info this info uh, icon so that would be pointing over here to another screen of info from the info screen I'm asked to customize
So this is going to be a place for people to add their name in input box. It's ask their name, and then that deals with the with the input. And then another screen which has the the map. There's my wireframe. That's my concept of my app in total, my website. Later on, we'll have other abilities, such as to save content in a database or to access um, device features like a camera, contacts, text messages, and such. So those are all of the, the different sections of, of my screen. Of my of my app, but recall that when I first loaded the project, it showed the desktop version because it detected I was on a desktop device, and if I were to visit on a mobile, it would show me mobile right away. So actually, zoom out a bit. All of that would be inside of. Um, All of that would be inside of a folder. Let me do this. All of that would be inside of a folder. So here is a folder. This is the mobile version, the mobile friendly version. Well, that means outside of all of that, outside of all of that, we had a different, we had a different screen, um, another index screen actually, where this one detects, um, are we mobile? So show us the mobile friendly. Or are we desktop? So show us the desktop friendly version. And that's going to be a folder with its own things and everything. So there's a preliminary mechanism to detect are we on mobile or are we on desktop and to serve us the appropriate one. And so There's two names, one of them I'm blanking on. Maybe you, can, you guys can help me out. Have you heard of the term responsive web design? Raise your hand if you've heard of responsive web design. OK, and there was another term related to that. Does anyone know what I'm thinking of? Because I can't remember it. Responsive web design and the other one. What's it called? What's that? Not quite. That might be a term for it, although I haven't heard it. but. It might be related. RWD versus adaptive web design. Yes, thank you. I'm, I was thinking of the other one, adaptive web design. OK, so we've got RWD responsive web design. Responsive web design. And then we've got AWD, adaptive web design. Responsive web design is that basically there is one file in a technical sense. There's one file that responds to the user. So that would be that we have an index file, our main, our main screen, and depending on what kind of device someone visits it, it with, it responds. It, shrinks to that size, or it grows to the monitor, or it grows to the projector. It responds. The index 
.html file. My HTML file basically responds. It grows and shrinks depending on the size of the monitor. Maybe if I go uh, landscape, you know, it responds to that too because now I've got a wider size responsive web design. That's the current hot trend at the moment. That's the, that's the, um, the one that people really care about nowadays uh, to design responsive web design projects. Before responsive web design, there was adaptive web design, which is that there would be a particular set of files, an index file, a home screen, for example, that has been adapted to fit best on a mobile device, and a particular set of files and assets and such to fit well, to adapt, that has been adapted to a desktop. So we're going to deal in this class with adaptive web design because we are currently developing a mobile-friendly project here that will look great on mobile devices. We will have a mechanism to detect is it mobile, is it desktop, and it will then adapt to the particular user's needs. And the reason we're doing this is because eventually our app will be mobile friendly. It will be an app that we sell or give away on the app stores. So either method will get us to the result that we want, but the RWD method assumes that you're going to be running an app or a project on the full spectrum of devices, which include uh, smartphones, tablets, desktops, slash laptops. We're never going to run our app on a desktop. It's not intended eventually to be on a desktop. It's intended to be a mobile device, uh, a mobile app, so tablets and uh, smartphones. So AWD is what we're going for because we're going to develop an app that will look great and work great on mobile devices. We don't need, and we're not targeting in our case, you know, the, um, uh, the desktop and such. So we'll be using adaptive web design, and this is our overall concept for our project. So again, I'm writing these notes, and I'm going to put it in the network folder if you want a copy of what we've written here. But that's what's going on with the example. There's, some, there's something going on here. Spoiler alert, it's JavaScript. There's something going on here that is detecting if you're on a desktop device or a mobile device. And if you're on mobile, it would automatically serve you the version that's been adapted for your screen. So, any questions so far? Okay. So if this is our overall high-level view of our project, let's drill down a little bit. Let's look a little bit more at other aspects again. We know what we're going to end up with, so the answers are almost sort of, um, you know, the, the answers are there. We just need to analyze them. If you were creating something from scratch, I would still do something like this. I would uh, sketch out something very basically. It's very popular to get post-it notes. You get post-it notes, you write, you know, input screen, and you put it on the wall, and then you write another one that says feedback form, you put it on the wall, and then you rearrange your project with the sticky notes. And we can do it here. I'm, I'm just drawing this in paint. I could do it also in Word. I can do it in Illustrator, Photoshop. I could do it in special, specialized you know, flowchart uh, software like Visio and such. But I want to think about the kinds of screens that my project will have. So notice this screen has these characteristics. We've got a header, we've got a footer, navigation, content area, the art screen, header, footer, navigation, content area, and computers as well, header, footer, content area, and navigation. It's just that different kinds of content is displayed, but they all share the same sort of uh, concept in design. So here I'm going to draw the general concept of one of our screens here. So one screen is going to behave something like this, where we've got a nav bar here, we've got a header here, footer, and 
content. I would, I would call it design A or screen A. I'm going to use screen A in various capacities as the top level of my, of my various screens because from these, from this kind of screen then I can access other screens. For example, over on the computer screen we have COM201. That screen is reminiscent of A, but notice it has differences. So I'm gonna, we're going to be calling that one B. But that one has a nav bar with a back button. Well, the nav bar has been simplified to just a back button. It doesn't have the extensive navigation element like screen A. And content, but no footer. So this is design B. Yes. No, on B we don't. See, if we go to this screen here, there's no footer. Um, what about copyright? Is that part of footer? I don't see a copyright here, and I don't see a footer. So no, there's no B. There's no footer in the B design. We could have it if we wanted, but um, for a little bit of visual differentiation, uh, we don't have a footer there. I'm sorry. What, what, what do you click on after the computer? What do you, well, you can press back. Well, you click on one of these classes. These are active links. Mm -hmm. And then we've also got another screen. If we click the info, the info icon, we have a different kind of screen. Screen C. Well, it's reminiscent of screen B. The big idea, though, that it is what it what could be known as a modal box or a dialog box. It doesn't encompass the whole screen like the others, right? If I if I look at this one, every edge of my screen is filled with my user interface. Even when we're on screen B, it goes edge to edge. But we're on when we're on the info box. Notice there's a little bit of padding and there's a drop shadow and there's an edge to this screen, this dialog box. So this is design C, reminiscent of B, but also notice the navigation element is simply a closed box. It's not a, not a back, even though it sort of accomplishes the same goal. So on C, try to round the edges a bit, and that has a That has a close button, header, no footer also, and content. <clears throat> so do I have any other unique screens in this app? ABC is it? Well, let's see. Uh, get directions. Get directions looks like B, doesn't it? There's the back, no footer, header, and content area. So that's the same. And then the customize. Uh, it's a variation uh, of the of the pop-up box. It doesn't look the same, but uh, I'm not really counting it as a separate screen since it's an internal element. And I suppose what we could say is that the art calendar, that's a different kind of screen as well. Uh, I'll just list it here, but I perhaps might not think, of it, I think about it as a screen. But in the code, it will be reminiscent of the code we've seen to create a, a screen full of content. Remember, we used the HTML5 tag. Does anyone remember from last week? What's the HTML5 tag that creates a brand new screen on my app? Section. So it's going to rem be reminiscent of the section tag, but actually it will be the aside tag, A-S-I-D-E, aside. But this also has a bit of a design. It's a, it's a column. It has 
uh, content area, but no header, no footer, and a basic navigation element, simply a back button or it can be a close button. So we can add that also for design D. We have A, B, C, different screens, different designs, and then obviously I can make them, I can make more, I, maybe I won't end up using one. Uh, I'm not focusing too, I'm not focusing at the moment on my color palette, I'm not focusing in on other specific things, I'm looking at things in a higher level. I'm wireframing it, also known as storyboarding. So let me make a note here, this is... even try to write it. This is this is wireframing, also known as storyboarding. So getting the ideas out in a basic way before we get to the code. And it's very tempting. I do it sometimes too, and then I eventually say, why did I do that? What I'm saying is, diving right into the code might be, you've got a great idea, you want to get right to start your coding and all of that, but if you don't quite have a plan, you might be running around in circles a bit as you develop your project. So to lay it out in a very basic way like this might be very useful as a first step. So any questions so far? Okay, so I think conceptually this is this is enough for the moment. Uh, we would revisit this. We would have this pasted up on our on our whiteboard to remind us that's our goal, so that hopefully we don't stray from it. And um, yes. Well, all of those are the different screens that we're going to run into here. This one here would be a screen A and A and A. These look the same. These screens here, basic, intermediate, and advanced, are screen B. They look like screen B. And then C is the info, uh, the info screen. D, we see it inside of art. And then, um, so these are the designs that we're going to be using here. So that might make a little more sense there, the, the different designs, how they're used throughout the project. And I'm going to put this in the network folder so if people want a copy of it, they can, they can have it. Alright, so I put that in the network folder. If you'd like a copy of it, you can refer to it. And um, it might help you throughout the class. <laughs> 